You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Violet Memoir. I think you know who we're going with, Lucas's Path. So guys, let's go ahead and pick it right back up where we left off. Please sit back and enjoy Phoenix 18 Minutes will entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Ooh, let's get some of that fox. All right, feeling myself becoming hot in a different way, I quickly pull away before the situation turns awkward. By the flushed expression on Lucas's face as well, I get the feeling similar thoughts are going through his head. Th thanks. N no problem. Can we do that again sometime? It's surprising seeing Lucas take such initiative like this, or maybe it isn't. I got to remember that Lucas isn't always this meek guy. He can be assertive and aggressive, and I don't doubt that translates over into more than just insulting others. Definitely. The elation that comes over him is worth every little bit of embarrassment I felt tonight. He jumps forward and wraps his arms around me again. Before I can even return the hug, he's already pulling, me, pulling away from me and darting back towards the elevator. As I watch him, tail thrashing about, the sides of his muzzle curled up and the way he seems to almost skip back, I can't help but have a smile of my own. Entering my room after taking a shower, I feel the fatigue from the entire day rush through me. All the excitement made me forget just how exhausted I really am. Should I make some food? Ugh, honestly, I'd rather just get some rest and eat a bunch tomorrow. Without wasting any time, I made a beeline towards my bed, only sparing a moment to place my bag on the desk. Falling on the bed, I'm flooded with my own scent. It's comforting and... It's comforting and causes my drowsiness to almost overtake me. Before I, but before I sleep, I should probably check my phone for any messages. Everyone's probably worried about me after what happened. Hovering it above my face, I can see I have a bunch of messages from four different people. I can't even think of a time when I've had this many people trying to contact me. The first one is from Mom, just telling me she hopes I'm having a good week and that she and Dad are always available if I need to talk, and that I'm always welcome home whenever I need it. The benefits of still being in the same town, I suppose. It brings a warm feeling to my chest, and a bit of guilt for not calling them as much, as I, as much but I think they understand that I need some time. As a, comp as a compromise, I send them a text letting them know that I love and miss them. Hopefully that's enough for now. The next batch of, me batch of, the next batch of messages are from Lee. Yo! Everything alright? Ah, uh, other kid doing better? Are you? I can't help but smile as I read through the cluster of texts. It's amusing how ever-protective Lee can be, but it's heartwarming at the same time. He's such a mother hen. We're doing better. Spent a little time at the library before going to his room. His roommate is nice. He's a lot of fun. He reminds me of Oscar. As my finger comes off the send button, I feel like I probably should have let a, left out that Aura reminds me so much of Oscar, if Lee's, polishing, if Lee's policing of Oscar is any indicator. I consider asking Lee about Aura. One of my cats is meowing. <laughs> Not meowing, you silly boy! I consider asking Lee about Aura. Uh, since apparently they knew each other in high school, but I don't know if Aura would want me to, so I'll ask the Pine Martin later. Moving on to the next message, it's unsurprisingly from Oscar. Hey, did everything between you cuties go alright? Both of you are real tense, so I hope you two are able to help each other out if you slip with, I, with, you slip with him, you gotta let me know! I roll my eyes at the very crude ending to his message. He's probably genuinely worried, but he's probably just as curious. I give him an even briefer summary than Lee's, worried if I tell him about Aura... Worried that if I tell him about Aura, he's going to interrogate me about sleeping with him next. Finally, I bring up the last message remaining. It's from Lily, and it looks like it's from only a couple minutes ago. She must have finally finished everything and gotten home. Hey, I wanted to ask if you wanted to get together with everyone and get lunch tomorrow. I want to make sure that you're doing good, and I bet everyone is worried about you. Let me know, and I'll sort it out, okay? It's not surprising that Lily is setting something up. She always has something in mind for what we can all do together. It's just surprising how organized she is. It is really nice to have people always wanting to hang out, though. I've never really hung out with friends since middle school. Sounds great. Um, I'm going to get some rest. Just text me the time and place, and I'll be there tomorrow. I do have some classes tomorrow at 8 and 10, so anything after 12 should be good. There's a part of me that wants to call her and talk. I feel like she'd know exactly what to say to put everything at ease. It's just the vibe she has. But I'm much too tired. After everything today on top of already not having much sleep, I just want to crash for the night. We're already going to chat tomorrow anyway. I toss my phone over my nightstand and shove my head into the pillow. My body must be must maybe even more exhausted than I thought as sleep overtakes me almost immediately. Man, your trans these transitions can be a little jarring. A cool breeze flows through my fur, sending a shiver down my spine. Autumn in Everwinter is rarely cold during this time of day. It's usually only during night or when it rains that the temperature dips. It must be the beach air. Walking down Jackson Street, which trails alongside the beach, the ocean air nips through my loose shirt and leaves the salty scent of the air flowing around me. How long has it been since I visited the beach? Five years? I never thought I'd ever come close to this 
come close to it like this ever again. Looking through the gaps between stores, I could see the motion behind them, sparkling as if covered in glitter. The lack of gusting winds lack of gusting winds leaves the water still, making it look like something out of a painting. After another block, I spot the building I've been searching for. It's a moderately long single floor building, modeled after a shack. The sign above it looks intentionally run down, spelling out the name Snapping Jaws. It's a restaurant and bar, only a short walk away from the beach. It's not shocking to see most of the tables occupied by people, leaving the only ones of outside vacant. This is surprisingly nerve-wracking to walk into a restaurant alone. Almost shameful that I arrive without any company. I know it's a silly thought, but it still causes a prickling sensation on the back of my neck, causing the entire thing to itch. After taking a couple of seconds to strengthen my fortitude, I finally push forward through the open door and am greeted by the instantly recognizable smell of fish. I can't imagine what this must be like for someone with a sensitive nose like Lucas. When Lily asked us to meet somewhere near the ocean for lunch and Oscar suggested this place, I should have maybe taken the hint that it would probably be, primar be primarily seafood. It doesn't take me long to find the table where our group is sitting. The otter sits tall like a beacon despite the table being on the opposite end of the room, next to two open doors leading to a dock-like balcony. Walking closer, I'm able to only see two people are sitting down so far, Lily and Oscar. The shared giggles between them are light and fun. For a moment, I think they don't, they don't notice me. They don't notice me heading towards them, but a glance out of the corner of Oscar's eyes and the flick of Lily's golden ears tells me otherwise. The two of them are on opposite sides of the booth. Between them is a long wooden table resembling a surfboard. I'm about to ask where I should sit, but Oscar beats me to the punch. Let me get up, let me get up and you can sit here. And then we'll figure out where, you'll, where I'll sit. That okay, man? Yeah, I mean, that, sound, that sounds fine to me. I think we should wait till everyone gets here and then we can figure out where everyone will go. That way we can fit everyone pretty well, but we'll sort it out when everyone arrives. Okay. It's overwhelming. I hadn't even said a word before I got bombarded by the two of them. It didn't, even, it didn't even seem planned. The two of them are just moving at a pace I can't keep up with, feeding off of each other's energy. Oscar slips out of the booth and stands up straight, his muscles flexing as he stretches. I try not to stare, but it's hard when he's standing right next to me. In a vain attempt to keep some dignity, I focus on Lily, who looks like she's holding back a giggle as she watches me. She's still wearing that yellow cardigan. Its soft color complements her light beige fur. My nose might not be as strong as the other species, but the floral perfume she's wearing is, a ple is pleasantly gentle. Her eyes are her eyes are a little dark, as she had been up all night, as if she had been up all night crying. But that doesn't stop positive energy beaming from her. Oscar finally finishes stretching, allowing me to look back towards him. He's staring right at me with a disappointed pout. Even if it's fake, it still makes me feel a little sad, but that quickly disappears as his grin returns. He gestures towards his side of the booth with both arms. It looks goofy with how casually he's dressed in the same tank top and shorts from before. Oh, such a gentleman. Lily giggles before, before giving an overly dramatic swoon, causing my eyes to roll, but I smile to grow despite my best efforts. It's hard to not feel happy around these two. They really know how to boost the atmosphere around them. Sliding into the booth, I sit across from Lily, and it's strange to sit, the, sit with someone around my height, considering just how much taller than me Lee and Oscar are. Marcus was always a lot taller than me, too. But even now, I wouldn't be able to hold him. But even now, I wouldn't be close. I'm doomed to never grow, stuck at the same height I was in middle school. And did you get better sleep this time, dude? No nightmares? Not tonight. I passed out as soon as I got home. I'm feeling a lot better today. My stomach grumbles, and I can feel my ears flushing as Lily looks away, holding back her laughter. The one saving grace for my pride is that Oscar looks oblivious. His ears aren't as sensitive as the canines. I'm just a bit hungry. I didn't eat last night, and I only had some toast before going to my lit class. Literature was a lot easier now that I'm able to understand the reading better. Lucas really saved my butt with that one. Maybe he can be my tutor for the rest of the course, too. Came to the right place, then. I found it in my freshman year, and I've gone have been coming back ever since. The fish here is the best, trust me. I've gone through most of the menu, but their snapper rocks. I've never really eaten much seafood. The smell always scares me off, even if they look delicious. Serimi in grocery stores is especially tempting, but I never got the courage to try any of it. I don't even know how to cook it. Ozzy, do you think I can talk to Wallace alone for a bit? I just want us to have a bit of privacy. Oscar doesn't appear at all surprised with Lily's suggestion, and it makes me wonder if they chatted about this before I arrived. I wouldn't put it past her to plan this. He glances towards me, and his smile widens. His eyes shimmer as he stares down into my own before giving me a wink. I'm left to gate by Oscar once again. I'm still unsure what exactly Oscar is thinking when he does what he does. Is he just that much of a frat bro that he doesn't understand what he's doing? Or is he just teasing me and joking around? Or is he actually flirting with me? Man, I just don't know. I'll tilt one of the seats at the bar where I'll definitely be out of reach and totally unable to hear you. Lily gives him a glare that reminds me of the time when my mother caught me skipping school that one time. I never thought of doing I never thought of doing it doing it again after that. Just the memory of that sends a shiver down my spine. Okay, okay, I'll be far I'll be the far end of the bar. Don't stress, man. Great! 
I'll send you a text when we're done. This feels a little bit intimidating. It causes Lily to laugh, and Oscar's expression to turn into a mysterious grin before walking off, neither of which does anything to help make me feel less worried about what's about to happen. Don't worry. I just want to make sure you're alright and hear about what I missed yesterday. I'm doing a lot better now. I went with Lucas to the library and he helped me with one of my classes. He's actually a really good tutor. I almost feel like I'm talking to my mother, trying to avoid saying the wrong thing and getting scolded. It seems, silly, but it, seems, it seems silly, but the way Lily is leaning her chin in the palm of her left hand gives me waves of nostalgia. I can almost smell the lavender in our backyard if the scent of fish wasn't so overwhelming. She only gives me a gentle smile and doesn't probe me any further, but I can tell she wants to ask more about what we did. It's a massive strain to hold back a blush from showing in my ears. I barely stopped myself from jumping when she rests her free hand on my own. I didn't see her moving, I didn't see her, moving her other arm. I'm getting too lost in my own thoughts. I'm glad you're doing a lot better. You look like you were having a panic attack or something. I was pretty, it was pretty terrifying to see you suddenly freak out like that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... No, no, stop that. You didn't do anything wrong, but can you tell me what happened? I just had a pretty messed up dream, that's all. What was it about? You don't have to be scared. I won't judge you. I opened my mouth, but after a moment's hesitation, I closed it again. I can easily find an excuse if I want to, but that's a disservice to Lily. She's reaching out and offering to help. It's not fair to her. I'm sorry you had to go through that. That must have been scary. Yeah, I'm just glad it was a dream. That diary must have really been must have really messed me up that night. Something about reading about the average day of someone who killed three people just made me feel sick. I shouldn't have pushed you to read that book. I didn't think it would have that as much of an effect on you. If you want, we can switch topics of our project. I know everyone else wouldn't mind. No, it's fine. I'll just make sure not to stay up all night reading it again. I think the lack of sleep didn't help. She squeezes my hand in gentle reassurance. It's soft and full of warmth like being covered in a fluffy blanket. Rename that. Lucas. There we go. Looking towards her face, I can't help but wonder if I had been... St if I had been... St if I had been straight... Looking towards her face, I can't help but wonder if I had been straight... If I had been straight, if she would have been my type. Okay. The way that sentence was already kind of confused me. Would straight Wallace have gotten a crush on Lily? I can't even imagine what straight what straight me would have looked like. Would have liked. What would have looked like. <laughs> His straight Wallace looks different than gay Wallace. Her ears twitch and she glances towards the door. Following her gaze, I can see that Lucas has just arrived. Oscar has gotten up from the bar to talk with him, but I don't think the conversation exa is exactly going to plan. Maybe it is, because it does look like they're actually talking, even if even everything Lucas says is followed by a roll of his eyes and what I can only assume is a si as a snide remark. Maybe that's the idea, just to annoy the fox to the point where he gets used to it. Lee's already here, if you're wondering. Lily whispers that across the table, despite there being no chance that anyone would hear us. But if she's right, I can't see Lee anywhere, not even outside with the other two. Really? W where is he? Not back, apparently. He was already here before we arrived, but texted us he wanted some alone time. Oscar told him that he was going to come out to see him, but he was pretty firm in telling him no. That everyone's here, then. Looks like... Eventually, Oscar heads back inside and collapses at the bar, looking rather pleased with himself, but Lucas stays behind, staring up at something we can't see. There's something different to him than normal. This isn't like when he's anxious or annoyed. It's like he's distracted by something he's seeing. I'm not sure if there's something wrong or if he's just waiting for something. Despite the people walking around him, he looks separated from the rest of the world. Isolated as he stares into the deep infinity of whatever he's gazing at. I can't tell from here, but he feels distant. What do you think? What do you think he's looking at? Maybe there's something in the sky or on the roof? It's hard to tell. He might just be stalling. He doesn't seem the, he doesn't seem the most fond of crowds. That makes sense. Neither am I. She giggles at that. A warm and soothing sound that perfectly encapsulates this relaxing atmosphere. We've only known each other for a couple of days, but it feels like we've been friends for years. If things start to get bad and you don't want to make a bad impression on the boys, you can always crash at my place. My bed's big enough for the both of us easily. We're pretty small, plus Dad's a great cook. A kind, a kind offer is overshadowed by the ominous mention of her father. I don't really know anything about him, but someone as confident as Lily must have an absolutely terrifying father. I don't think your dad would approve of you sleeping in the same room as a boy. I get the feeling he won't worry. This causes me to pause, my eyebrows furrowing in confusion. And the realization of what exactly she's implying hits me, and I can feel any argument die on my tongue. Oh, yeah, I guess that would make sense. Now, if it was Lee, Lucas, or especially Oscar, then I don't think he'd let me. I didn't think I stood out that much. It's not a bad thing. You just, uh, just don't sleep with my dad, okay? I recoil in disgust. The thought of having sex with a friend's dad just feels wrong. Plus, he might be at least in his 40s, right? But maybe he's... Uh, no, 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 let's not go down that route. Ew, that's so gross! 
Hey, I'll let you know that my dad is great and you'd be lucky to have him. Can we please stop talking about me having sex with your dad? Fine, fine, fine. But I meant what I said. I know it can be a bit hard to ask the boys for somewhere to stay and us lovers for and us lovers of those who are bad for us gotta stick together. Why would I not be able to ask them? Her smile curls up. The mischievous edge to it gives me an uneasy feeling. It takes a lot of willpower to not break eye to not break eye contact and focus on something else. Well, you know. They all they're all a catch and I bet you want to make a good for good impression. That definitely isn't what I had expected. What? She's leaning back against the chair, looking to the side with a curious smile covering her face. Despite its inquisitive nature, it's still gentle. There's a noticeable hesitance to her, a feeling that she's letting me choose how far I want this conversation to go. I'm distinctly reminded of my mother, si of my mother sitting outside on a summer afternoon talking to my aunt as I play with Marcus. Not wanting to feel melancholic, I push the memory away, forcing myself not to dwell, so not to dwell and bring myself back to Lily's sideward glance. Following her gaze, I can see Lucas is still standing there, staring up at something. He's dressed up too formal for the situation, which isn't too abnormal for him. It looks like a little messier than usual, like he did it in a rush. But looking closer, I can see he's nervous. From the little twitches of his tail to the rapid darting of his eyes, from the from, the, from Oscar sitting at the bar to the two of us at the table. He's trying to keep himself steady, and it makes me want to walk over there and hug him, letting him know that he doesn't need to work himself up. He seemed to respond really well to it last night. We meet each other's eyes, and his, his eye, and his widens for just a moment. I can even imagine the little gasp that peps out of his mouth, barely audible and involuntary. We hold our gaze, and he takes a deep breath, steadying himself. He stands up straighter after that and gives himself a look over, a look of annoyance and borderline disgust appearing when he notices all the little mistakes in his outfit. Without a moment's hesitation, he begins to clean himself up. It looks like he's following a routine as he moves his hands from his shirt to his head for with machine-like rigidness, as if unable to make mistakes due to his programming. Soon enough, his shirt is flattened, his fur is smoothed down, and his little tie is adjusted properly. He looks like a totally different person now. There's a significant increase in his mood as well. He doesn't radiate an uncomfortable aura anymore. Meeting my gaze again, he gives a little shy smile, so I, so meek I might have missed it if it wasn't for his ears splaying out. I can't catch in many details from this distance, but both Lily and I can see the way the insides of his ears are darkening. That's adorable! He's really fond of you, isn't he? You think so? The skepticism on her face as she stares me down makes me feel like I'm under interrogation. Not wanting to feel the scrutiny any longer, I bring my attention back to Lucas. The sound of her snorting brings my own spark of embar brings my own spark of fiery embarrassment. Lucas is back to looking up what looking up at whatever he was staring at before. He looks most assured than before, but there's still a distant look in his eye. I wonder what's going on. Should I go talk to him? If he's still there when we're done, I think that's a good idea. So, as I was saying, all right, guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. It's late, I'm getting tired. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Have a super thanks or tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!